Stay tuned, you won't want to miss it because Tiger TV starts now. Welcome back to Period 3's first episode of Tiger TV, the show for and about Memorial High School. I'm Janina Caneo. And I'm Thomas Martinez. On today's broadcast, we will be showcasing some outstanding videos produced by a third period advanced production video production class. For our first video, we have Daisy Flores and Diego Restrepo. They are going to tell us a little bit about Memorial's thoughts on bullying. Let's get started. Bullying is an academic that has affected people socially, emotionally, and in some cases physically. Tiger TV is here to give you a scoop of our thoughts on the subject. Frankly, I have to say, I don't think I've ever been bullied. However, I was called and teased when I was, um, I would say, sixth, seventh grade because I had braces on, and the braces back then were really shiny, so I was called tinsel teeth, you know, but the way I got back at it was that I just smiled more in their face, you know, make them brighter. In my opinion, there is uh, verbal and emotional, there is physical, and then there is the new one which is over the web, so cyberbullying. How is bullying different now than other generations before us? I would say that bullying primarily is still the same. The only thing is that because of cyberbullying, kids can't get away with it, can't get away from it, I should say. So uh, if you have a phone with you, you can constantly get messages. If you are on any of the social networking sites, um, you can be bullied through there as well. And so there's no downtime. Years ago, you went to school. If you were bullied in school, you got to go home and no one could reach you there. And I felt you had more protection. Do you think bullying is going to be a problem in the future? Unfortunately, I am going to say yes. Um, it's what I call the, the beast within the beast. Uh, it's not nice. I wish it would go away. I'm hoping that uh, future generations understand that bullying has very specific consequences. If someone is not in their right emotional state, we have already witnessed that bullying can push a young person to commit suicide and that act should never be the answer. Uh, no one should feel that desperate and that lonely to have to think that that's the only way out. So um, I do think it's going to continue. I wish 
that more young people can become part of the solution so that at least it's lessened. Allegedly, 35% of students from age 12 to 18 get bullied and with 15% cyberbullying involvement, according to the National Center for Education Statistics. Will you be the one to stop this, though? Us Tigers have to work together and stop this madness. I feel bad for anyone who has ever been bullied. Thank you guys for bringing attention to such a worldwide problem. Well, now on the lighter side of things, we have Janina Caneo, Kay Mazo, and Amber Diaz. Here are the girls teaching teachers about slang. Wow, that was lit. It seems interesting the words that we use now. I wonder how many people actually use slang words. Just remembered, I've heard some of those words used in hallways today. Speaking of hallways, let's see what people have to say about student traffic in the hallways by David Martinez and Moises Chiquito. So the traffic is horrible. Uh, it's pretty hard to get to the annex. Leaving the freshmen in one building really isn't going to solve anything. If more students from the freshman academy have to go to the annex, that just causes more of a cluster. What I think is, I don't like it to be honest personally, because like the traffic, it makes uh, like some students like get late to their class, and like, we're all crowded, and like some of them are pushing. I just find it really annoying how people can't just seem to walk into class at a simple speed, because it, it's just a lot of times 
people get attention or just get into trouble with the teachers because everybody's just clustering up the hallways and it's everybody's just scattered throughout the hallways and it's just really annoying you have people just messing around getting in the way nobody getting anywhere it's just it's just always packed every morning so that would be my thoughts this is something that could be easily fixed but is just purposely made to be even worse than what it should be what are your thoughts on like any type of solution what we could do to make this situation a lot better i think what should be done is they should add um a multiple multiple routes to go to the annex and forward back to the main building like two years ago we could go through the doors downstairs and walk past the street into the other building and back and that caused the traffic to be a lot less clustered the other building could be just for like the seniors and juniors and then like separately the the other like annex a could be like for the sophomores like just for the sophomores because like it gets too crowded my solution to this would be to simply walk just just learn how to walk and talk at the same time like like I see people like I see a lot of girls that just can't walk and talk at the same time they have to they have to be in in a conversation and like slowing down the whole like taking up all the space in the hallway because they, they can't walk so and maybe they should also make it how it used to be a few years ago where you could cross from you could just go out and, and walk down to your classes instead of having to take the bridge it, w it was so much faster that way This is Moises Chiquito and David Martinez from Tiger TV, signing off. They're not wrong. The hallway traffic is a pretty big problem. Well, you just got a small look into our building, but now with the next story, you're going to take a visit around our entire school. Our tour will be led by Thomas Martinez, Sammy Torres, Jacob Gonzalez, Andres Gonzalez, and Renzo Garcia. Hey, I'm Thomas Martinez. I'm Jacob Gonzalez. I'm Renzo Garcia. I'm Andres Gonzalez. And I'm Sam Torres, and we are your 20, class of 2020 Tiger TV correspondents. This story today will be a student-led tour of the best school in Hudson County, Memorial High School. So without further ado, let's get into the Tigers then. As you can see, guys, Memorial is known for their athletics. We have many trophies on the walls, like these. And then over here, and some more back there, and some more over there. So yeah, this is the main, the main building. This is where a lot of people come in right before school. And right here we have guidance where we have some of the best counselors in Hudson County. These guidance counselors really look towards benef benefiting the students and make making sure that every student has a good year and, and an awesome high school year. And here we have the attendance office. Is, if a student is ever late, they come to the attendance to get a late pass. If they ever want to check on their uh, history of being absent or cutting, they come to the attendance office to check that.
was great. What do you think? Yeah, it really was. Now that we toured the school, we should get to know some of our teachers and students if they're really as smart as we think. Well, here's part one of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? By Leslie Avila, Michelle Ortez, Giselle Mahano, and Giovanni Gonzalez. Let's get started. Which is one of the 13 original states? It's either A, Alabama, B, North Carolina, C, Ohio, or D, Vermont. B, North Carolina. C, Ohio. B, North Carolina. Who purchased the Louisiana Territory? <laughs> no. Um, you just want options? No. This one you have to guess. Oh. <coughs> Wrong. Thomas Jefferson. How much is 14 times 16? <laughs> About. <laughs> Sorry. I don't... Well, 10 times 16 is 160. And 32 and 32 is 64. And 160, 224? Maybe? 224. Why I got to do this? I'm failing math, probably. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, I have no idea. Is this like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Because I'm definitely not. I'm not at all. Four, what do geologists study? Geologists. Rocks, they study the ground, uh, the earth itself. Who was the first president of the U.S.? Joe oh Washington. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. George Washington. Yes, I got one. <laughs> Wow, what an awesome video. I wonder if I'm smarter than a fifth grader. Yeah, well, I don't know about you, but thank you so much, made me hungry. Coming right up, we have a very fun segment by Jamie Catedral. She will show us how to make some delicious flan. Hello everyone, it's Jamie from Tiger TV, and I'm here with a video. This is going to be a how-to video. I will be showing you how to make a flan. So these are going to be a couple ingredients that you'll just need. I'll go over them in a second. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You want to make sure that you have it, you know, nice and warm. Alright, so the first thing that you'll need is evaporated milk. I use carnation, you can use whichever you want. Then sweetened condensed milk, vanilla extract, a cup of sugar, one cup, and four eggs. So these will be all our ingredients that we'll need to make our fun. Pretty simple, pretty easy ingredients you can find at the store. All right, so now this is going to be the sugar part. This one we have to be very careful in because it tends to be the most difficult part for some people because some people actually burn the sugar, so we don't want that to happen. All right, if you have an electrical stove, you might want to put your fire around or your heat around eight or nine. That way you have control of it um, when you're obviously cooking the sugar. I have a gas stove, so I just have to monitor and see like how much fire I want it to have. So here I'm just like scraping at the bottom and like turning a little bit, like mixing it, because I don't want the sugar to you know sit there for too long. So yeah, oh, and we usually use a wooden spoon when cooking the sugar because it does get to be very very sticky at a very you know like like kind of gooey consistency so it sticks really easily once you're done with it so yeah that's why I suggest using a wooden spoon and not another type of spoon that can have like a kind of plastic material on it so here I'm just stirring and stirring and here I'll show you a clip of how much I have my heat on 
So just about that, that's just right for the sugar. And I'm just gonna keep on stirring. You have to stir constantly and always keep an eye out on the sugar. All right, so here is when the sugar is almost dissolved. It starts to kind of like start getting clumpy. That's when the heat is like obviously, you know, doing its magic and making it into a kind of like syrupy maple kind of consistency. So here I'll just keep on turning and you see I'm trying to show you how the clumps look. And then here I am pouring it into that's just about the consistency that I want it to be at. Um, obviously you can't let it sit in the saucepan for too long. I'm here pouring it again. You want it to sit sit in the saucepan too long or else it'll like become sticky and it'll harden. So then, yeah, you just swirl it around just like that, around the edges, once you have it in your mold that you're going to put your flan in. And that's just about how we want it to look. Here I'm putting the evaporated milk in a blender because we have to blend it up. And then I'm putting the sweet and condensed milk. You might want to use a spoon for this <clears throat> because it does, it's a very thick kind of milk I would say so getting a spoon and like scraping it out would totally be like useful to get all of that um, sugar you know thick sugar into it so yeah that's just about it and then I'm going to add in four eggs excuse my hand <laughs> um, so yeah we're gonna crack four eggs into this so like I said it's a very simple re simple simple recipe it doesn't require a lot of ingredients, and you can probably find all this in just like one chop. Alright, and then now we're going to add a little bit of vanilla extract, just a splash. Um, and just still cracking the eggs. So yeah, the vanilla extract, you can get any like brand you want. Like I said before, it doesn't really matter. It just depends on, you know, which ones you like better. Because I know that there are some vanilla extracts out there that are like a stronger flavor than others. So you use whichever ones you want. Alright, here we go. So I'm going to put in a little bit of the vanilla. Just a splash because it's a pretty much it's a strong flavor. So you don't want to like overpower it. So just right there. That's about how much you want. And now we're just gonna blend it all up together. So in here we have the evaporated milk condensed, four eggs, and the vanilla extract. Blend it up, and that's how it's supposed to look like. You pour it into your mold where the sugar is. And then <clears throat> this is how it came out of the oven. We did a bath marie, so we put some hot water in it so that the sugar wouldn't so that the sugar wouldn't like stick and like become That hard. looks amazing. It sure did, didn't it? Yeah, we should spend a day baking. Yes, we should invite Rosie Castellanos and Alexander Castillo to their videos about how to make cookies from scratch. Let's watch them now. Hi, I'm Alexandra. Hi, I'm Rosie. And, and today, today we're, we're going to show you how to make cookies. cookies. Preheat oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. In a small bowl, stir together flour, baking soda, and baking powder and set aside. In a large bowl, cream together the butter and sugar until smooth. Beat in egg and vanilla. Gradually blend in dry ingredients. Roll rounded teaspoons of dough into balls. Bake the cookies 8 to 10 minutes in the preheated oven or until golden. This is how the cookies should look like. Wow, great done. videos. Can't wait to see the rest of the upcoming video. Uh, well, that's our show for, the, for today. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and to tune in for any future videos. For Tiger TV, I'm Anthony Gonzalez. And I'm Yadiel Perez. See you later, Tigers.